three weeks of working 20-hour days, I put forward my vision to Israel, which answers your question. I said, uh, I fell back on a vision because people were living exactly as you say in semi-socialist Israel. They were awash with false economics, basically saying, divide the pie, divide the pie, don't increase the pie. Okay, that was basically what they all grew up with. And, and unless you get mugged by reality, it's very hard to change it. But we were being mugged by rea economic reality again and again and again, and we didn't change it. Now comes my opportunity. Three weeks into my being, uh, uh, taking up the finance ministry, I give a press conference. And I fell, fell back on my first day in uh, the military, in basic training. It's a long line. Uh, uh, the company's put in a long line uh, on a big square. And the commander uh, uh, points to me and he says, you, Netanyahu, look to your right. Put the man on your right on your shoulder. I did. He then looks at the, uh, the next guy, puts the guy on his right, on his shoulder, and so on. Well, I had a pretty big guy on my uh, shoulders because the commander blows the whistle. Barely took a few steps together. This is a race. It's called the elephant race. The guy at the bottom is the elephant. The guy at the top rides the elephant. The next guy was the smallest guy in the, in the, in the platoon in the company, and he had the biggest guy on his shoulder. He collapsed on the spot. The third guy was a big guy, and he had a relatively small guy, and he shot off like a rocket and took the race. And I said to the Israeli public, all national economies are pairs of a private sector, of a public sector sitting on the shoulders of a private sector. The private sector is the one that produces the wealth, or most of it, okay? The added value in the economy. And in our case, the public sector became too big, and we were about to collapse. We were about to collapse like the guy next to me. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put the fat man, this became known as the fat man, thin man uh, <laughs> example, and taxi cab drivers and comics spoke about it. It, it actually went into the Israeli cycle. Uh -huh. If uh -huh. you ask people now in Israel, fat man, thin man, they know what I'm talking about. The fat man at the top, okay, we're going to put on a strict diet. Very hard to do politically. You're going to cut government budgets, okay? And the thin man at the, at the bottom, we're going to put a lot of lungs, a lot of oxygen in his lungs. And what is oxygen? Well, many things. But number one, number two, and number three is low taxes, low taxes, low taxes, because that's why people... Risk, uh, you know, that's why they work. That's why, because they don't want to pay it to the fat man at the top. They want to have it themselves. And once we have that, we have to, the, the guy can race forward, right? Run forward and take the race compared to other economies. Well, not true, because as he begins to run, he hits a ditch, and then he hits a wall, and then he hits a fence. And these are called barriers to competition. We have to deregulate the excessive regulation that semi-socialist Israel had, and still has to some extent, but we've, we've done a lot there. So it's three things. Compress the fat man, uh, lower taxes, and do other things to make business very attractive and easy, and remove barriers to competition.